right, I'm here with Summer Crenshaw, CEO of Enterprise Technology Association, putting on since the AI Week, and tell us a little bit about ETA and how since the AI Week got started. Yeah, so um, Enterprise Technology Association is a member organization that's really focused in um, education and really activation in areas of emerging technology. So um, last year we saw the hype that was going on around everything in generative AI and realize that if a place like Cincinnati didn't uh, raise its flag when it came to the tech that was happening, um, that we would once again be a flyover city. And so knowing that, we decided um, that it was time to set up something that would be representative of the, of the community, for the community, by the community, um, to showcase that AI is actually being done in every crevice of the United States. Um, and we all have a place to uh, rise up and, and work collaboratively collaboratively together because technology is just in this massive transformation. Well, before we get too much into the tech, if AI didn't exist, how would your story be told? Oh gosh, that's a, that's a challenging one. It, uh, if tech didn't exist. Um, so I think I am, I'm a, a inquisitive person and I like to serve others that are underserved. So I think my, um, my passion would be manifested, I think, in, in community driven engagement anyway. Um, so it's manifesting now in tech, um, but in previous lives, it's it's been in, in, in the non-tech space as well. So um, definitely have a passion for, for serving others. Okay. Was there ever a time that you almost gave up and what kept you going? <laughs> um, this is my seventh startup. So yes, there's been plenty of times that I've definitely wanted to give up, um, but kept going. And I think it's those moments of um, where you find energy instead of where uh, energy is sucked out of you. And that's what's actually kept me going. So I always kind of follow energy, not passion, not uh, a lot of the cheesy things that others go for. I just, I follow energy. So as long as I have the energy to keep doing what I do, then that that's where my motivation comes from. Okay. Have you ever felt that you were stuck in trying to express uh, what your company stands for and what helped unlock that? Um, yeah, I think that, that is, that's always a challenge. And I think that the, the bigger challenge is, as far as a small business or a startup is that it's evolving. It's never um, what you might have set out to do. Your brand changes, your products change, your ethos, the, the people you serve, the problems you solve, they all change. And so you always have a challenge with expressing, I think, over time. Okay. What part of your brand uh, has to be human touched and, and not rely on that tech side? Um, a big chunk, actually. I think the funny thing about what we do is a big chunk of it is very much manual and very human powered. Um, we are so centered on the communities that we serve. So whether it's Cincy or it's Nashville or Atlanta or our other eight markets that we're in, um, it's representative of what's going on in the local market. So we can't do that without community engagement. And that means it has to look like the community. We have to talk to the humans that are doing the great work. Um, and that looks like everyone from uh, higher education to the government officials to the tech leaders and ev everything in between. Um, and that's 100% human driven. That is not technology driven. Okay. What's your honest take on AI as a branding tool? Is it a threat, a tool, something else? I think it's a combo. I think that there's, um, we would be naive to think that there isn't a threat in some, in, in the current state by which we market ourselves. And I think one of the biggest challenges I see is that um, we now are giving power to AI in ways that uh, took a while when we look at like Google, for instance, you know, before we would search and that's what we would go through and we would analyze. Well, now we're giving up that entire power to AI and going for the answer economy. I want my answer now. I'm not gonna do the search. So, you know, for me, that that looked recently and I needed a new speaker for uh, one of our engagements. And instead of going to Google and doing a research, I went to Grok, asked Grok, hey, what is the most popular current, you know, tool that does this, this, and this? And it gave me the answer and that's what I bought. So I just circumvented the entire search ecosystem. So if you are marketing yourself or building a brand, you have to think about what that looks like for the generative world and how that will express itself through these generative engines. Okay. Have you ever delegated a creative task to AI and instantly regretted it? Many times, <laughs> um, more often than I can count. Uh, honestly, I think I've, I've seen more, more failures than successes. Um, I think it's great for brainstorming, um, but unless you've got that thing finely tuned, it is not gonna, it's not gonna act like you, it's not gonna express itself like you. Um, and I think that it's good to iterate, but that's, 
that's about the extent that I see right now. Now in the future, I think that's, you know, gonna change and future being, it could be weeks from now where we're like seeing the next great breakthrough. But right now I still think it's a lot of human element and a human touch. Okay. And when do you feel the most human in your work, even when you're using the advanced tools? Yeah, I think um, when I'm trying to better communicate with other humans. Um, so if I have a challenge of, of expressing myself or a challenge in um, you know, what the best way is to solve a certain problem that is affecting others, it helps me work through it. So I think that that's a really cool um, aspect. It's more of a coach than it is um, you know, something that's just like fully augmenting my life. Okay. Complete the sentence. The best stories of the future will be told by? Humans. Okay. <laughs> What advice would you give to creators that are afraid of losing their voice to the AI wave? Um, I think that instead of looking at it in a fear fearful fashion, I think you should look at it as a way to better express yourself. I think that there's opportunities to unlock areas that you might have never had the ability to express yourself, and you can use it as a tool to help coach you through that. So I've seen people um, that hated social media couldn't stand it and it was because they were blocked because they couldn't figure out how the heck to tell that story and finding a couple of little pieces of you know um the ai saying hey did you know you could talk about x y and z and it's very much related to you that this little glimmer of hope i think is what is helping folks um and i think that you know when we look backwards we will we went through so many technology transformations this one's going to be a big one obviously um but we have always gotten through it and then have always been able to lean back into who we are as a human. And I think we're gonna see human connection be so much more valuable and the things like AI Week become so much more valuable because we're realizing we have to have the human in the loop. We have to have the, the um, ability to connect in ways that we've basically been disconnected because of you know the, the, the previous five years or so. Okay. What's Summer's superhero power, the thing that AI cannot replace? Oh, gosh. I have no idea. Um, I was going to say, you know, I multitask really well. Um, actually, I think um, I, I'm pretty good at bringing the right people into the room. Um, that doesn't always mean that it's my uh, me being in the room with them. Um, but I do feel like I can, I can help um, get the right types of talent into the room together so that they can collaborate or do great business or engage in meaningful ways. Um, I think that that's an area that I, I do pretty well. well. Thank you for sharing with us about Enterprise Technology Association and for bringing everybody together here at Cincy AI Week. Thank you.